Up dude gang, you did it, we are 100,000 strong, thank you for subscribing, to celebrate, here's a super extended version of an all time favorite, what is your go to creepy unexplained story, this can be anything from a paranormal encounter, glitch in the matrix or even aliens, there's a lady that my mom has often seen doing, questionable things in our street, I was walking to the shops with my mom and she pointed out said ID, who was standing outside the shopping center, to show me who she is. I was just like oh okay and we kept walking inside and left this lady still chatting to another person outside. There is only one entrance to this small shopping mall. We walk into the store and pick up a trolley, only to see this exact same lady now at the front of the long queue with groceries, waiting to pay. Same person, same clothing, same everything. To this day we still cannot begin to fathom how she got past us and did her shopping in basically less than 2 minutes when we left her standing outside and we're both sure as heck she didn't pass us in that space of time. I had just moved into a new house. One day I was downstairs when I heard what sounded like furniture moving around upstairs. I go up to investigate but no sounds. Nothing is moved. Go back downstairs and it starts again. I go back up. Nothing. This went on for about an hour. I almost called the police because I was positive someone was in my home. I ended up calling someone and kept them on speakerphone while I searched the attic and any other place maybe an animal could be hiding but I never found anything. Eventually I gave up my search and went to bed. That night I had a dream that I was driving to work in the rain and fog and crashed. Someone approached me and asked are you ready to move on and I woke up. At the time I was working mid shift so around 10pm that same day I get in the car on a foggy and rainy night and make my way into work without any issue. The building I worked in had security cameras all over and it being so late I was the only person coming in. When I get inside the person I was relieving asked who I came in with. I was alone but she swore someone followed me inside. It was a very unnerving 12 hours to say the least. Not sure if it's supernatural. But it's definitely creepy. I was hiking through the remnants of a remote, long abandoned town in the surrounding area. To get to as far into the woods as I was, you had to cross fallen trees over a creek three times. I had just crossed the third bridge and was about 5 miles in and something blue caught my eye just ahead of me. There was a man, in his 60s at least, wearing blue satin pajamas, sitting in a tree. The closer I got to him the louder he laughed. It wasn't a maniacal laugh but it set off all the alarms in my head nevertheless. He also wasn't wearing any shoes and looked well groomed cleaned. I gave him a friendly nod as I passed and he just kept laughing. Then it stopped. I turned and he was gone. There was no branch cracking. Plants rustling. Nothing. He was just gone. Still rubs me the wrong way. The area I was in was a pretty rough hike. Very secluded. Not very many people venture as deep as I was that day. No idea what was going on there. You just met the Cheshire man. This happened about 2 months ago. I was alone in the house as my parents were away working for the weekend. They were due back that evening, when my mum texted me to say that they'd broken down and were awaiting the breakdown service to pick them up. I asked them if there was anything I could do but they told me to go to sleep as they'd probably be back late. Fast forward to 3am. I woke up to use the toilet. When I left the bathroom, I glanced over to their bedroom and the door was shut and I could see the light on inside. At this point I should note that when I went to sleep, their bedroom door was open and the light was off. So I thought oh they must be home. I stumbled towards the door and remember stopping myself, thinking no, I won't go in, I'll just speak to them in the morning. So I turn back towards my room and go back to sleep. Next thing I know, I'm being woken by the sound of the front door opening downstairs. I glanced at the clock, noting it was 3.45 am. 45 minutes after I'd last woken up, I thought it was a bit strange and got a tense feeling in my stomach. I walked out of my bedroom, glanced over to my parents room only to see the door open and the light off. The bed was also made so no one had been in it. I felt sick. So I went downstairs and nervously asked my mum have you just got home she was like yeah. Why I just sat staring into space wondering what the frick happened. I'm still wondering now. You had a dream. Didn't experience this first hand but I overhead some of it on the phone. My sister was visiting my parents. Home from college. For the weekend. I live in my own place the next town over. 
I called her about something and she was clearly very upset. She told me she was home alone and something was happening and I asked her if there was someone in the house an intruder. She told me there were animalistic growling noises coming from the corner and my mom's dog was going nuts on the noise. I could hear him in the background. She said the hallway lights were flashing on and off. I told her to get her jacket and calmly walk out of the house, taking the dog with her if she could, that I would be by soon to pick her up. She went outside and brought the dog with her. Her friend was even closer than I was so she picked my sister up and they hung out at her friend's house for a while. About 20 minutes after that my brother, who also lived nearby, stopped by the house to return some tools he'd borrowed for my dad. He went inside because he saw the lights going on and off, and he's an electrician. Once he was inside they stopped. He kept hearing someone walking around in the other room, but when he'd go in there, no one was there and when he called out no one responded. He checked the whole house and then also heard animal growling noises from the same corner as my sister. This is an outside wall corner, with windows. Not enough space for a raccoon or something to be trapped inside the wall. My brother felt really unnerved and left. She need to throw the whole house away. I own this really random photography book called 100 Young Americans. That I bought around 2007-ish, maybe earlier. I know I still own it because I recently reorganized my bookshelf. Just last week I was getting into my car and I saw something sitting on top of the trunk of my car. I get out. It's a copy of 100 Young Americans. Just sitting on my hood. Why is that random photography book that I've literally never seen anyone else have sitting open on the hood of my car? Also, yes, my copy is safe and sound in my bookcase. I'm pretty sure something wants you to take a closer look inside the book. You clearly haven't found the ghost yet. This might become mine after what happened last night. I was playing poker at the local casino and got into a hand with this guy who was wearing some sort of space themed hoodie. The second the first three cards hit the board, I had the strongest deja vu I have ever experienced. I had a dream about that exact moment like a year ago, and I knew the exact next two cards that were going to come out. They came out just as I had expected to the point of me calling them, and I won a huge hand. Came home from a date at about 11pm. House dark. Didn't switch on lights because I know my way around. Went straight to the bathroom, on my way back, down the passage I bumped into my dog, a sharp A, he is as big as my mid thigh. Told my boy I love him and he should be sleeping but good boy for checking on his mom. Open my bedroom door which was 3 stroke 4's closed and switch on the light at the same time. Only to see him on my bed, sleeping, lifting his head when the light came on, to look at me. I would have heard him or felt him move past me. I was alone. What bumped into me? You bumped into his secret girlfriend. My family moved into a new house when I was 11 years old. The previous owners were a family and the mom died of cancer. They sold the house shortly after she passed away. Growing up, my sister and I always had an uneasy feeling about that house. Strange things would happen but each instance had a plausible explanation. Except for this one time when I was 16. In the middle of the night I was having trouble sleeping. While I was lying there in my bed, the door to my room opened on its own. I could hear footsteps come into my room. I couldn't see anyone but I felt like someone else was in my room. Ever have someone come up behind you while you're on the computer or listening to music and just know they were there without hearing or seeing them? Like that. I could hear the footsteps get closer to my bed. Then, right next to me appeared compression on my bed. Like an invisible person was sitting there. I could even feel the weight shift. I reached out to touch the compression and all of a sudden a bunch of blue static electricity shot out from the spot I touched I screamed and ran out of my room, waking up the entire house. I couldn't explain what I saw that night, was almost questioning my own sanity and that's why I don't tell this story often. For the record, I was 100% sober at the time. Also, because I could move I don't think it was sleep paralysis. The strange thing is that years later my sister ran into the daughter of the previous family. She told my sister that her mom had actually died in the house not at the hospital. Okay, almost a year ago a very close family friend, pretty much my uncle, passed away. It really took everyone by surprise. He constantly rode his bike, ate very healthy meals, and made sure to squeeze in some exercise before work. Ironically, he died from a stroke during one of his workouts. 
A few days after the funeral, I went up to my parents and told them about two weeks or so. I had a dream about my teeth falling out. In my culture that means someone is going to die. My mom went on to tell me about a family pic she had taken on her phone that same month. She deleted it as soon as she saw it, because of how much it freaked her out. There was a completely different face on top of hers. As she was telling me, she got very pale. And finally, one of the weirdest, maybe most chilling part out of all this, my dad's dream. My dad and my uncle were very close. They were friends for many years. Heck the house I grew up in, was built by them, for them. My room was supposed to be my uncle's room. A few days before it happened my dad had a dream he was walking towards this black vehicle parked outside the house with my mom. He said he was like some sort of zombie, mindlessly walking behind my mom, until he saw the driver. It was just some woman, couldn't really see her face but could tell by the shape. She was waiting for them. That's when my dad snapped out of it and grabbed my mom and ran back into the house. But before he left, he realized my uncle was sitting inside the vehicle. He woke up in a panic. He then continued to have dreams with that same woman, lingering outside the house, until my uncle passed. This happened back in June. I had to renew the registration on my car and decided to do it on my lunch break. That morning, I bought a snack at work and used my personal checking account debit card rather than the joint account card I have with my husband. I had just been paid and I knew my personal checking card had money to cover both the snack and the fees for my renewal. A few hours later, I head over to the DMV. I give the lady my inspection paperwork and last year's registration card and take out what I assumed was my personal checking card. As I hand it over to the DMV lady I realize the card is actually my card to the joint account. My other card nowhere to be found. Luckily I have just enough to cover the renewal in that account and do a quick transfer once I leave so I don't bounce any bills that money was actually intended for. I tore my car, wallet, and desk at work apart looking for my personal checking card because I knew I had it that morning. I even pulled my account up to verify I used it to buy my snack that morning. I figure I must have dropped it somewhere at work or in the parking lot and put a freeze on the card. Get home. Tell my husband I lost my card and go to my room to change. Open the door and on the floor in front of my dresser is my missing card. I log into my bank account to verify that I had used it that morning, and again, the charge is there. I didn't come home before going to the DMV, yet there my card lay on the floor. No idea how it got there, still creeped out. My daughter and I still wonder what happened. We were traveling along the 401, Ontario, Canada, from London to Kitchener. We'd done this trek many many times over the years. My daughter has to pee bad. We are coming up to the first Kitchener off ramp so I tell her that the next ramp is ours and we'll be home in 15 minutes tops. So we keep going, watching for our exit which should be no more than a few minutes, but it doesn't come. We keep going and going and going, all countryside. Finally an exit comes up, but it's not the one we're expecting. Somehow, although we hadn't thought so much time had passed, we had missed at least 4 exits while watching for them and passed through two cities without seeing them. We ended up having to stop at a Tim Hortons to pee and driving back home another way. This is one of my biggest fears, just a never ending road. My parents house was brand new in a really nice subdivision, and I was 5 when we moved. I wasn't ever an anxious kid or anything but I was terrified of the house. I refused to be upstairs alone, and I had really frequent panic attacks. We lived there for 15 years before I moved out, and I was never comfortable. I live in a 75 year old farmhouse now, and I don't get uncomfortable the way I did in that house. Only one creepy thing actually ever happened to me there though, and this is it last year. 32 month pregnant me went back up to see my grandmother before I had this baby, and I was staying with my parents. But my dad was traveling for work so it was just my mom, my sister, and me. My mom had gone to the grocery store and I was lying on the sofa. The way the living room is set up, you can see the reflection of the bottom two feet of the foyer and staircase and the TV. And also the kitchen on the other side of the living room. So I'm lying there messing around with my phone, and I hear the stairs creaking. I look up at the reflection in the TV and I see a pair of bare feet standing in the foyer. I think it's my sister so I tell her to come and sit with me and feel then baby kicking. 
There's no reply and the feet turn and walk towards the kitchen. So I sit up to say hey, and there's no one there, at all. My sister wasn't even home she'd gone to work. My parents have moved closer now and they're closing the sale of that house at the end of this month. They're a little sad but I'm relieved. 32 month pregnant me. See, there's your problem right there, that would make anyone uncomfortable. When my family first moved to CA, the house we lived in had a lot of weird things occur. My room happened to be close to the front door dining room area. Basically, I could hear the front door open and close. So one day, I'm in my room playing games. It's after school. Everyone is home except my dad, who's not home from work yet. I'm almost 100% concentrated on an MMO, but I hear the front door open. I quickly turn to look out and I see somebody walk upstairs. I assume to be my dad. Immediately after, I hear my youngest brother yell out, Daddy's home. Daddy's home my siblings and my mom all rush upstairs to go after my dad. I don't think much of it and kept playing my MMO. Just a few minutes later, they all bolt downstairs. There's a big commotion and my little brother is in tears. I'm still into my game, but I can kind of hear what's going on. My brother saw a figure go upstairs and thought it was my dad. When they got up there to the master bedroom, no one was there. I knew I heard the door open, and I also saw somebody to upstairs. But again, we had a lot of strange things happen at that house. This was fairly recent, a few months ago like in March or April I would assume. But for a bit of a backstory, there is this abandoned mental hospital that my mom was a patient at, and my dad worked at for quite a while. It's actually how they met. The hospital has been closed since January of 2006, and it's a state hospital, and it's huge, over 80 some acres. Since then the state has been trying to figure out what the heck to do with it, and some of the buildings are used to house gov offices and such, but most of them are completely vacant. And before this incident I have been inside most of the buildings besides a few that are those offices, and I have been through a lot of the tunnels that connect every building, and they honestly look like exactly what you would see in a cheesy horror film. Anyhow, me, my boyfriend, and our friend, let's call him Brian, all enjoy coming to this hospital because it's a lot of fun to explore, and we all love this kind of crap, so we get there, business as usual. How we typically approach the nights that we explore here. We're all dressed in black, warmish clothes because it gets cold pretty quickly and we head out to where we always enter the tunnels and go through buildings that way. So we have spent about an hour or so exploring different buildings, walking the tunnels, and me taking pictures for Instagram cause I'm that person. And we get really far and deep into the tunnels, to the point where I'm starting to question where we are. I am typically pretty calm given I am so used to this hospital, and know where I am. But I do get scared extremely easily especially by loud noises given I have very sensitive ears. We all come to a bit of a halt. Cause Brian found a room that he decided he wanted to check out, and my boyfriend and I were waiting outside of it, just talking and me taking a few photos. To the right of us, there's a small little passage. That leads to a door with that distorted type glass pane and one of those older lights that hang over top of the door. Brian being a frick ass teenager, sees a fire extinguisher and decided to do as any other would do, and blast it. The noise scared me. I fell to ground and fainted for a few seconds and my boyfriend and Brian were laughing of course, and my boyfriend starts picking me up. We all heard a noise suddenly, and I'm struggling to get up, and my boyfriend looks over to the right where the door is, and sees nothing through the glass but saw hand reach from inside the door to push it open. The door opens and no one was there but we all ran for it. I looked back several times and no one ever followed us. But regardless of what happened, I think that's the fastest I have ever ran in my life. I'm the first person to try and disprove any paranormal occurrence with logic. But there was nothing that made sense to me logically, and to this day we all don't know what happened that night. My mom had cancer when I got married. After the wedding she was pretty persistent that my wife and I send thank you notes to everybody in attendance. We finally got them out and she was very thankful. Unfortunately, she passed away due to surgical complications 6 months later. After the funeral, my dad and I were sending thank you notes to everybody who brought flowers. When I signed the last one, sealed it, and tossed it on the table, I said to my dad it's done. That was the last one. 
Just then, the phone in the kitchen made a ding noise, like it was about to start ringing. I said to my dad that the phone was about to ring, but then nothing happened. He picked it up after some back and forth and when he did the line was dead. I'm convinced that it was my mom thanking us for sending those thank you notes out. While creepy, that sweet dude and it made me smile. Sorry about your mom and if it's any consolation. From this day forward, I am going to stop half adding whenever I need to send thank yous out. A few years back I got two free tickets to Oregon Country Fair from a friend who bought them but couldn't go. My girlfriend and I headed up the day before with the intent of finding a dispersed camping spot in the national forest about an hour away because we didn't have camping tickets. It took us a while to get going and by the time we got to the national forest it was nearing sundown. We found a spot to pull off by the side of one of the roads and decided to put the seats down and camp in the car because it was too dark to really check out the site and set up our tent. I made sure the doors were locked and rolled down the windows about 3 quarters of an inch so the car doesn't fog up. We go to sleep. At some point in the night I'm woken up by the noise of something sliding against the glass of the window. I wake up and shine my light out but I don't see anything. I go back to sleep but soon I wake up again to the same noise. I have my light in my pocket so I pretend to be asleep while I get it in my hand. Then I pop up and shine it out. This time I see something dark behind the closest tree. A huge pine tree. I climb into the front seat in under 30 seconds and speed out of there down the dirt road a couple miles until I get to the paved road. It's like 5am so I decide to drive to a fast food place and park there to get a little more sleep. When the sun rises the first thing I notice is that the dust from the dirt roads has collected on hand smudges on my windows. The handprints and fingerprints were around where the window was cracked. Somebody out in the middle of nowhere in the national forest had tried to unlock my car while my girlfriend and I slept in it. At my dad's funeral my sister, my aunt, dad's sister, and I all sat around the table discussing various things. One of the things we talked about was my cousin's funeral. This was my aunt's daughter. She died about 12 years prior. She was hit by a drunk driver while on vacation with our grandparents in Myrtle Beach and suffered an internal decapitation. She was DOA. She was 10-11 years old, going into 5th grade. My sister was 8, I was 5. I don't remember too much about her or the funeral tbh. My sister told the story about how she and a friend had gone to play at the playground where my cousin had gone to school. While they were playing they saw a little girl hanging out around them but never coming up to them and never saying anything. Both my sister and her friend were freaked out. The girl was wearing Jean short overalls, a white flowery tee, and had long brown hair braided into two pigtails. I chimed in and said that that girl must be really poor and not able to buy new clothes because when I would play there, I went to that elementary, that little girl was there and she would follow me around the playground. My friends also heard too and they thought it was weird. For some reason, she didn't weird me out. I just thought she was shy and wanted friends. She was always wearing the exact same outfit my sister described and had long brown hair braided into pigtails. This is when my aunt, who is now in tears, chimes in. It turns out that my cousin was buried in a brand new pair of blue jean short overalls, a white tee with flowers on it, and with her long brown hair braided into two pigtails. We never knew what she had been buried in because it was a closed casket funeral. She was really beat up. My sister and I have no doubt that the girl with both saw on the playground was our cousin. A few years back I was preparing for an overnight camping trip in an area that didn't have any cell phone service. My mom called me to tell me my grandpa was going in that day for a quick routine surgery and that I should give him a call before I head out of cell service to send him my love and well wishes. I did so, and went off camping without a worry in my heart. That night I had incredibly vivid dreams that I was at the hospital where my grandpa was, and that things weren't going well. I was watching my mom panic and worry, as well as my grandma. They discussed whether to let him go or not. I saw him on the operating table. I was there. I was with him when he died. When I woke up the next morning crying, I told my boyfriend that my grandpa had died and that my mom is probably trying to get a hold of me. He reassured me that it was just a bad dream brought on by the worry of someone I love being in the hospital. But I knew. I just felt it. So we drove to the nearest town and I called my mom. 
She answered in tears and told me that my grandpa had indeed died from unforeseen complications. I told her about my dream and she was shocked. The scenes and conversations I described were exactly what happened in the hospital. I described what the hospital looked like. I had never been there as I lived in a different province. And sure enough my mom confirmed my descriptions. I have never before or never since experienced anything like this, or anything paranormal whatsoever. I know though, that I was with my grandpa in his final moments, in that hospital. My dad bought this old rundown house as a fixer upper. I was about 8 or 9 at the time, so I couldn't do too much to help him, but I remember helping him clean out the attic. It was full of tons of old newspapers and toys. Think hoarders. Just tons of toy dolls and fun and cars etc. That creeped me out on its own. But still, we slept there for a while when it was in livable condition. Anyways, here is the really scary part. The part my dad waited till we were grown up to tell us. One person came by to look at the house when it was near finished and for sale. She said she really wanted it cause it was full of spirits. They thought she was wacky but whatever. If that's why she liked, good for her. Some time later, my dad and mom are laying in bed there when they hear a woman laughing at somewhere in the house. They both rolled over and just looked into each other's eyes as they listened, and stayed that way till it stopped, then never talked about it for a long time. They both get chills when they tell that story now. I heard what I thought was my brother singing. We had a piano in our basement as teenagers, and in the early morning or late at night, he spent quite a bit of time on it playing music. I should note, we lived in an old house, and sound traveled relatively well, so even when he was being quiet, you could hear him all the way up on the top floor. One morning, around 8am, I woke up and went about getting ready for the day. My brother was singing in the basement, being loud and obnoxious, his voice is very distinct, and I remember walking out the bathroom, leaning over the top of the stairwell, and shouting down for him to shut up, he kept going. So I shouted louder, but then I remembered my brother wasn't home that day, he'd left earlier that morning with my parents, the singing stopped, I went downstairs to find the basement dark, I was alone in the house. A disembodied voice may have saved my sister's life, when I was about 12 my family lived in my great grandmother's house, she had died in that house before my sister and I were born, but we knew that it was her home we were staying in. I'm sitting in the front room as my sister walks toward the front door, and she suddenly stops and turns to me. What did you say she asked? I hadn't said anything. I was sitting quietly with headphones on. We're looking at each other confused and suddenly a car spins out in the street in front of our house. The driver regains control and takes off at high speed again. My sister was about to walk to her friend's house and might have crossed paths with that car if she had left the house. We're both startled and my sister tells me that a stern voice that sounded like mom told her to shut that door. Mom was in her bedroom but when we asked her she hadn't said anything or left her room. Somewhat related. My sister had talked about dreams she had where she would come home and speak to her old woman. One day my mom finds an old photo album and my sister instantly recognizes a picture of the old woman from her dreams. It was our great grandmother whose home we were staying in. From what I've learned over the years... Things like this are common for the women in my family. Not really creepy, just a bit odd. I had a favorite pair of silver hoop earrings that I liked to wear pretty much all the time. One day, I looked for them and couldn't find them. No big deal, I'm kind of disorganized and figured I just left them lying around somewhere. I kept my eyes open for the next day or two, figuring I'd stumble across them, but no luck. After they'd been missing a couple of days, I had a date planned for later that evening and really wanted to wear them, so I really thoroughly looked everywhere I could think, behind furniture, under couch cushions, etc. I especially looked in and around my bed, as I had a tendency to climb in my bed with them on, and feel them poking and pulling when my head would hit the pillow. My usual habit was to sleepily pluck them out and toss them on the nightstand, but sometimes I'd miss, so I looked everywhere, behind the nightstand, under the bed. In the sheets, under the pillows, nada, bummed, I gave up. A couple of hours later, I went and got ready for my date. Just as I was about to leave, I glanced at my bed. There, resting in plain sight on top of my pillow, were my earrings. 
I was home alone at the time, and hadn't left the house in between looking for the earrings and getting ready for my date. There's no way I could have missed them, and I cannot for the life of me figure out how they could have gotten there. When I was a kid I was playing outside at our farm with a doctor. Fate action figure. I was in the middle of the lawn and I was throwing it up in the air and catching it, pretending he was flying. I go to throw it up and I swear it just disappeared and didn't come down. I thought I lost it squinting in the sun or something and searched the whole yard for it. No trees or bushes around, and the house was too far away so it couldn't have ended up on the roof or anything. There was nothing around me but freshly mowed lawn. It was my favorite toy so I spent so much time searching that day and the next. I never saw it again. Not creepy, just unexplained. Well some minor creepiness for our son. We lived near an American Civil War battlefield and cemetery for a few years. There were trails through the woods that we would hike a lot. One day we're looking at the cemetery and my wife hears me walk up to her. We were the only ones there, so she turns to say something. I'm nowhere nearby but on the other side looking at a cannon. From that day we started experiencing oddities. Her car was always kept in the garage and its inside mirror kept moving overnight. It wasn't drooping from a loose fitting but would be a random direction. Sometimes it would be pointed up, other times sideways. Weird but I kinda dismissed it as her bumping it while getting her purse or other items when getting out. But then her car went into the shop and the next morning I went to go to work and the mirror in my truck, which I parked in the driveway with the doors lock, was moved upward. Next morning, same thing, different direction. She got her car back and my mirror never moved again. There were little goofy things too. Typical haunting stuff like things moved, the sense of somebody behind you, etc. Also, our house was a ranch style with the master bedroom on the first floor and our 8 yo's bedroom on the second right above ours. The flooring job was substandard, so we heard his every movement. He started going to the bathroom, which was down the hallway and halfway across the second floor from his room. A lot but every time we'd go check on him, he'd be asleep. So one night we decided to catch him coming out of the bathroom for no reason other than to make sure he was okay and to tell him to quit stomping like an elephant because come morning he never remembered going. We never were able to. Every time he'd go to the bathroom, one of us would head upstairs while the other stayed in bed. We wouldn't hear him return and the other would find him asleep in his bed. The next morning we asked him if he was up and walking around last night and he said no. But that four weeks something would walk up to and away from his door but not open it. My wife turned to the room and said, You're welcome to hang around, but please stop walking up to our son's room at night. You're scaring him. The footsteps never reoccurred after that although the car mirror thing kept on. Could she have been pranking me? Maybe. But one of the times my truck's mirror moved was after I'd gotten home and I went to go to the store a couple hours later. The only set of keys to it had never left my pocket. Could our son have been pranking us? Again possible, but the dang flooring was so bad in one spot that even our cat walking over it caused it to squeak making it nearly impossible for him to get back to his bedroom without us noticing. Sounds like Mr. Gosty had a little crush on your wife. I had a glitch in the matrix just today. I was doing a damage audit and an inventory audit on our fleet vehicles today. I did the damage audit first. I found a vehicle with significant damage and listed out details. This was among about 10 damage vehicles inside of about 30 we have on our lot. Well, upon turning in the damage audit, I'm told this vehicle is not on our lot. But befuddled, I went and checked, and it was not where it was when I inspected it. I searched the whole lot. Gone. We had no transports today meaning the vehicle was never moved. We also checked the location history of it and it had only been rented and returned out of one location about 20 minutes away. It's never been on our lot before. Here's where it gets creepy. I'm thinking okay. I just had the unit number wrong. Nope. I pulled up previous inspections and it had the exact same damage on it that I had written out. So somehow I inspected a vehicle properly that was not and had never been on my lot. The Rendlesham Forest Incident. Short version. Across three days, multiple US servicemen at a British Air Force base saw UFO maneuvering near their base. Two airmen reported finding the object landed in the forest, and performed a close, direct inspection of the object, as in, close enough to touch it. The base's deputy commander took an entire team out into the forest to investigate, 
and all of them observed an object moving through the trees, splitting up and dropping sparks throughout the forest. Afterward, the landing site was inspected and found to have significantly higher than normal radiation levels. Official explanation, the beam of a lighthouse. Freaking radioactive lighthouses freaking people out. My grandmother died when I was in 8th grade or so. After a few years my grandfather came to live with us for a bit, and then had to go into an assisted living home. I am in college and we have decided to open up their house for a family reunion. One of my cousins, K, flew in early with her 5-6 year old son, T, to open the house and air it out and turn the power water on. This was in rural Mississippi. K and T were going to a hotel at night and come back the next day. This was early 90s when seatbelts weren't always worn. As they pulled away, K notices T looking out the back window and waving at the house. What are you waving at, buddy? I'm waving at the lady. What lady? The lady in the rocking chair on the porch. Now, there were several chairs on the porch, but only one rocker. It was the chair my grandmother sat in and waved at all of us as we drove away from a visit. She always sat and waved until we were out of sight. The next day, some aunts and cousins opened up the one room they hadn't opened the day before. My grandparents' bedroom. As they are sweeping and dusting, T wanders in, points to a picture of my grandmother on the bedroom mantle and says, Hey mom, there's the lady I was waving at yesterday. To K's knowledge, that was the first picture of his great grandmother T had ever seen. Years later, I had another encounter in that bedroom. We were back for another family reunion, and my wife and I were put in that room for our visit. That night, as we were laying in dark, I reminded my wife of that story and she punched me. My dad actually told me this story, from we and my brother were young. Now, to preface, my dad has always had a foot in the spiritual world, with demonic and ghostly experiences. One such story was that, when my grandfather died, my dad woke up in the middle of the night, and saw him floating outside of the window. My dad called home, and found that my grandfather had only passed away a half hour ago. My dad was in the US at the time, while the rest of his family was in China. But, to the real story, several years back, I wanna say around 2005, we went on a family trip to Yosemite. Fairly standard trip, pretty falls, fun hikes for us kids. However, on the last day of the trip, as we're headed out of the park, we decide to stop by this pretty glade, with a small stream running through it. It was a bit off of the main road, and the side road that continued was covered in essentially a tunnel of trees. My parents were just relaxing, enjoying the view, and me and my brother are venturing deeper into the meadow. When my dad gets a gut twisting, horrible feeling, he said that when he looked towards the tunnel of trees, it seemed to get a lot darker and the trees, twisted, became distorted, at the very least, it was definitely not normal, my mom said that he began shouting at us to get in the car at that moment, and we all ran to the car, my dad drove the frick away, but he says that he saw the darkness following us, touching the back of the car briefly, near where my brother and I were seated, as we drove down the hill, my brother and I suddenly came down with really, really severe nosebleeds, and the next day we had pneumonia, but my brother ended up having to go there. I've had a handful of creepy things happen in my life. Here's an interesting one from my childhood. Since I haven't heard of anything like this from anyone else, but if you have something similar or an explanation, let me know. When I was around 8 years old I lived on a military base in Hawaii. My older brother and I used to explore all over the woods and streets but the oddest place we kept coming back to was this sort of concrete sewer opening that had a metal grate over it. It was located at a dugout ditch by the side of the road. Standing over it looking down you could see it was a pretty deep drop. So me and my brother used to talk to this thing that lived in the sewer. It started one day when we were dropping rocks down inside it to hear the echo. And then we started yelling into it and something answered back. It was this echo noise that sounded kind of like faraway water running in a pipe. But also kind of like the songs whales make. All mixed together. It's really hard to explain. It sounded very faint but very distinct. So we yelled again and it responded again. The noises lasted for maybe 5-10 seconds then stopped. Some answers were longer than others. We kept testing it, we were asking it questions like do you live in the pipes, are you a ghost, etc. And when we were finished speaking it would make the sound again. 
The space of time between our questions and the corresponding sound varied. Sometimes it was immediate and sometimes there was a short wait. We weren't even freaked out though. We were kids and we just thought it was really cool and weird. So we said goodbye and left. But we checked back the next day and it was still there. We waited in silence before we initiated conversation. Trying to listen for the noise but there was nothing. Then we started yelling and it started. Back up again. And so we just kept coming back and talking to it. We always said hello and goodbye. We would experiment with the things we said to see if we got different reactions. Sometimes we would insult it and then say just kidding right afterward. Being dumb. I would bring my friends to show it off but they would get creeped out and want to leave. Once my brother and I brought a whole group of kids but the noise never came back. We were just hollering into emptiness like idiots and they all thought we made it up. Then when I went back to basically ask, where were you dude? It took like 10 minutes to hear it again. Weirdly I had forgotten all about this incident until a couple of years ago. I was so young when it happened that I just accepted it as a bizarre but mundane part of my life. I had entire meaningful chat sessions with this thing. Man. My brother had forgotten all about it too. Until I brought it up a fairly recently. No idea what the heck it could be. I know it sounds crazy and my boyfriend says we should just double check the locks. Which is not a comforting thought. But I watch too many scary movies to not find this weirder than that. I manage a store in a building with two other businesses and shared bathrooms. There's been construction next door so we have had some weird power outages. Plus it's FL and stormy all of the time so that's normal. So I walk in today and go to bathroom to change into my work clothes and I heard the sink running. I think that maybe it's my boss and compose myself. Then walk in and no one is in there but both of the sinks are running. They are both running with the handles turned fully, the ones with long handles so you can tell right away. I didn't really think much of it and turned them both off and went about my day. I get home around 8. My boyfriend gets home around 10. We live in a 2 bed 2 bath apartment. We don't use the extra bedroom and hardly ever the bathroom unless one of us is showering. So tonight we heard what we thought were the sprinklers outside but it was louder than usual. We went to go outside just to check and realized it was coming from the other bathroom. The sink was on full blast as well as the shower. The shower wasn't fully on just kind of half assing it. The sink however was fully on and almost overflowing. It just creeped me out and I'm not really sure what to think. The rational part of me blames plumbing and the heat. The other part of me blames a water wasting ghost. This was over a year ago but I still think it's weird that apparently the universe gave zero fricks about the water bills in two places on the same day. I mean it's not like someone would break into an apartment just to run the water. Plus that still wouldn't explain it happening at work too but fortunately that was the first and last time. The wet bandits strike again. When I was a lot younger, maybe about 13 years old, my family and I were vacationing in St. Simon's Island. GA. I had an aunt who lived there who, at the time, gave tours of the reportedly haunted lighthouse on the island. Well, one night she hooked us up and gave us a private tour of the lighthouse after house, as in there was no one else there except for my aunt who was giving the tour and my family and I. Since the lighthouse was haunted, throughout the entire tour, I was anxiously awaiting some paranormal activity of some kind. Unfortunately, nothing remotely paranormal happened. So, my aunt led us out the front door of the lighthouse and turned on the alarm for the night, so that no one would break into the lighthouse. Note, I personally watched her check the lighthouse, put the alarm on, and lock the doors. Then, my aunt got into her car parked out front while my family and I decided to just walk around a little bit and look at the outside of the lighthouse. That's when we saw it. We were looking up at one of the second story windows in the lighthouse and saw one of the curtains slightly peel back. I was able to see a sliver of what looked like a woman's face peeking out. For literally a second. I saw one of her eyes and upper forehead. And her skin had a very grey tone to it. Then the curtain snapped shut. At this point. My legs were shaking like jelly and I turned to my family to see if they had seen what I had just seen. Everyone saw the curtain peel back. But my dad was the only one that saw the woman's face. Anxious to see more, we ran around looking at the other windows of the lighthouse. When we caught a glimpse of one of the upper windows above the third floor landing, there was an up and down window shade on this window, rather than a peel back curtain like on the other window. All of a sudden, 
the window shade started going up and down very rapidly. This lasted for almost 30 seconds before coming to a complete halt. But the weird part was that, because this window was above a landing, there were no stairs beneath the window for anyone to stand on to be able to move the curtains. We did not see any more ghosts that night, but we immediately called my aunt who was already at home by this point. She assured us that no one could have been in the lighthouse because there are sensors inside that would have set off the alarm. She told us that when the lighthouse was first founded, the lighthouse assistant killed his boss for having an affair with his wife. This murder took place on the front steps of the lighthouse. My aunt told us several experiences that she had also had inside of this lighthouse if y'all are interested in hearing more. Once upon a time, I lived with a couple and their child. They asked me to babysit so they could have an evening together. I agreed. Fast forward to bedtime. The child doesn't want to go to sleep because of the monsters. The child is adamantly sincere, which creeps me out a bit. But I play it cool. I look around the room, pretending to scare them away. This does the trick and child falls asleep. Later, I'm sitting in the living room which is oriented so the couch faces away from the main entry. I'm watching TV, expecting the couple back at any minute. That's when I hear the entry door open and close. Just like I've heard it many times before. With a smile on my face. Based on my success with the child and the knowledge of my good deed, I stand and turn towards the door. There is no one there. I'm skeptical of the paranormal, but this unnerved me. Once the couple actually returns, I tell one of them about it while we have a smoke. He says, oh, yeah, we were gonna tell you that stuff happens here all the time, particularly in the child's room, but we didn't want to scare you. Needless to say, I slept poorly in my basement bedroom for several days. I was 7 or 8 at the time and my mom had driven me home from a church choir recital. As we pulled into our garage, I saw what I thought was a black shadowy figure creature in our side yard moving around our garbage bins. In retrospect, it could have been a black cat or something, but whatever it was was terrifying enough for me to freak out and tell my mom. She pulled the van partially into the garage and walked outside to take a look and convince me it was nothing while I watched from the back seat. To my horror though, her face went pale and she sprinted inside, leaving me in the van. I hid under the back seat, not really knowing what to do for a couple of minutes, but finally got my nerve up to run in the house. I came in to see my mom panicking and my dad on the phone with a 9. 1. 1 dispatcher. Over the course of a couple minutes, I found out that while walking around the side yard to see whatever monster I was so afraid of, my mom had actually seen our across the street neighbor having a heart attack on his driveway. So, in the most unexplainable event of my life, I inadvertently saved a man's life by seeing a monster ghost stray cat sneaking around the recycling bin. I used to work for a restaurant that had originally been built as a private home. One night while hashing things out with the bartender I see this guy in a suit walk up the stairs behind me. Now we just closed so I'm thinking this guy is a customer. I turn to speak to him and guy was just gone. I turn back and there is the guy in the suit reflecting off the bar mirror. I didn't piece it together at the time but the guy in the suit was a dead ringer for the guy who built the house in the 1890s. To preface, my family always suspected the house I we grew up in was haunted. Voices, footsteps, noises, etc. My family has since moved out of the house, but apparently, through chatting with the neighbors, the family that moved in has suspected the same. They asked my neighbors if we had ever said anything about it possibly being haunted. The young boy had talked about seeing a man around the house, whole family hearing noises, and it got to the point where they actually called in some priest religious figure to cleanse the house. Anyways, my personal story and the one that probably makes me the uneasiest, is when I was in high school. I remember waking up in the middle of the night to my alarm clock radio spitting out static cut by clear whispering. In my deep sleep fog, I thought my alarm might have randomly went off, ignored it and fell back asleep. It wasn't until the morning when I woke and I realized it wasn't plugged in, and it does not carry a battery. Kinda freaky. I was always super skeptical throughout, but then when I was back there for my wedding years later, we had a bunch of family over. Everyone was out of the house running errands except for my aunt and uncle. When we got back, they kinda froze up and when we asked them what was wrong, they said they had been hearing footsteps in the back room and assumed we had been home. 
I guess the fact that others have heard things, including the new family moved in who hadn't heard any stories or anything, makes me wonder about everything I heard growing up. A few years ago, I ran into someone from high school at a pub in my hometown. I was never really close with Ryan in school and I don't think we ever talked, but this night we actually spent a lot of time chatting, sharing cigs and having fun with a couple mutual friends. He was so friendly and we shared a lot of interests, so it felt kind of incredible that we'd never hung out before. Our city isn't that big. After the group of us concluded the evening with a terrible rendition of Bohemian Rhapsody at around 2am, I went to leave and walk to my boyfriend's house nearby. When I mentioned that I was walking alone he insisted that he and a couple of his friends walk me. It was a short distance and I didn't want to impose, but they were going the same direction. I said sure, and off we went. As we finally reached my boyfriend's street, I turned to head towards his house and Ryan gave me a pack of cigarettes with three inside. I'd been mooching them from him all night. I only ever smoked on the weekends, when I was drinking. About a month later, I woke up for work on a Wednesday and was craving a cigarette. This was really unlike me. I allegedly enjoyed the last of the three cigarettes from the package Ryan had given me and headed to work. During my lunch break, I was on my Facebook and saw many RIP Ryan messages posted by mutual friends. I thought it was a hoax because he was known as quite a jokester. Turns out he had committed suicide the night before. Why that day of all days to wake up craving a cigarette? I've always been interested in the symbolism different interpretations of the meaning of the number 3. So to finish the third and final cigarette that day, hours after his death, felt odd in retrospect. I found it very sad the first time I read it. Hope he found peace. I worked in a bar. Very old building. Countless ghostly events. Ghost hunters actually investigated the building and informed me that there were at least two ghosts present during the investigation. A young lady, 19 year that had a crush on me and would follow me home. And an older man, red and black plaid shirt. I know this because I saw him once and tried to serve him a beer. This had to have been about 2 years ago during the summer. I had this dream that I was in this old Timmy train station and I was standing next to this man wearing a brown trench coat and one of those fedoras reporters used to wear. The man then turned to me and said I'm going to pick up your uncle bud. Don't worry about him, he's going to be just fine. As the man turned away, the train pulled up and the man walked on. I woke up from the dream as soon as the train pulled out of the station. When I woke up it was about 1 in the morning. The next morning I get the news that my great uncle Bud died in the night around 1am. I immediately told my parents about the dream. After describing the man in the station, my dad shockingly exclaimed that he knew for a fact that the man in my dream was his dad who had passed years before I was born. According to my father his dad wore the same brown trench coat and hat, and it made sense that his dad picked up uncle Bud because they used to be really good friends. I remember at that time being really shaky on my beliefs of the paranormal and sometimes I still am, but I truly cannot explain that. My sophomore year of college, I lived on campus but my boyfriend didn't. He worked on campus and would often hang out in my dorm with me between class and work. My bed was lofted with my desk underneath it, and sometimes I would take a nap while he sat at my desk doing homework. One afternoon I woke up from a pretty vivid dream and started telling my boyfriend about it. I remember hearing him respond, and in the middle of my response I felt this shift in the atmosphere. It was like the whole room suddenly became slightly darker and colder. I quietly said his name but he didn't respond. He had been at work for about 3 hours. I grabbed my backpack and did homework in the library until he was off work. When I was 8 and a half ish. My friend and I like to go push biking a lot. We lived in a small country town, so we're pretty much given free reign to just disappear for the day. It was a weekend, and as we were riding up the crest of a small hill that overlooked a valley in the town, I started to get this deeply uneasy feeling. We stopped at the top. From where we were, we looked out over the valley and directly at the next hill, because Australia really just has bumps, which is where our primary school was. The bottom of the that hill was the bottom of the school, and it was the road where all the parents picked up their kids. As I'm looking out over the valley, enjoying the sunshine and the breeze, movement catches my eye. 
I look back at the school, and I freeze in terror as I watch one car go careening into a car pulled up on the side. I see the two cars smash and crumple up, I can hear the crackle of breaking glass, the rattling thump of the impact, and I know with a bone deep, terrifying certainty, that my other close friend, her sister and mum are in there, and that they're dead, and my friend is going to be left all alone. This was an unshaking fact in my mind as I stared at the accident. I didn't question how I could so clearly hear the screams of the onlookers, the screech of tearing metal, or the ozone stink of hot metal. Even though I was too far away to even be able to hear anything somehow, I was getting sensory overload, like I was right there. My best friend asked me what was wrong. I'm shaking and crying at this point, so I manage stutter and somehow to get across what I've seen. She's puzzled, so my attention focuses back to her as she explains that there is nothing wrong. What am I freaking out about? So I look back, still horrified and there's nothing there. Everything is still, quiet and calm. A week later, in exactly the same spot, my friend was in a devastating accident. Her mum was picking her and her older sister up from school when someone lost control of their car and smashed into them. The mother and sister died on impact, and my friend was hospitalized for months afterwards. I felt horrifically guilty for years afterwards. I should have told someone, anyone what I saw, but it was so strange and unnerving that I just tried to forget about it instead. I had pneumonia when my grandfather died. I sleepwalk. I think I was sleepwalking this because I don't remember it. I woke up, walked into my mom's room, shook her awake and told her that papa loved her and wanted to her to know he would always watch over her. She was ushering me back to bed when the phone rang. That phone call was my grandmother telling my mom that papa had passed. I'm sorry for your loss. My friend's mom had something similar happen to her when her father passed. I hope you found comfort in it. My old house was definitely haunted. My normal quiet dog would growl in empty dark rooms and I'd seen shadow quickly move across the hallway. The worst moment though was when I was about 9 and could fall asleep. I was randomly looking round my room when I saw some sort of creature crouched in the corner, with a dark body but bright red face. Now being a wimpy little kid, I immediately wrapped myself up in my bed covers and forced myself asleep. Never saw the thing again but still kinda creeps me out to this day. I was catching a train one day and I found a DVD on a seat. I checked to see if anyone owned it but the train car was empty so I stuffed it in my bag. That night I watched the short film that was on the DVD. In the film, the protagonist found a DVD on train and later on in the film, he met the star on the DVD that he had found. Fast forward to a few nights later and I was at a restaurant and saw the actor who played the protagonist. Not quite believing what was happening I walked up to him introduced myself and told him I found the DVD of the movie he starred in, on the train. Initially he said something like oh cool, then as it sunk in his face went pale, his mouth gaped and we both had to have a drink to recover from our minds being blowed up. I was a kid at the time, around 10, in the neighborhood, there was a very small house stuck between two others, with a minuscule outside garden, a single window on the first floor, and with a single inhabitant, a man who, to put it midly, would give Jack Nicholson's character in as good as it gets a run for his money in jerk ass. And then the man died alone in his sleep. He was found two weeks later when the local shop noticed his absence. To explain that he wasn't loved would be an understatement. His sons and only family, both influent and wealthy engineers. One is a high ranking official in the government electricity company, the other the city engineer of an entire district, brawled over his coffin for his meager inheritance sealed the house's door with chains and a lock, and left to get lawyers to help them secure the better deal. One day, while I was playing tag with the other kids, we were running past the house when one of us stopped. Hey guy, there's light inside the abandoned house. Stop talking bull, they're nobody. He's right, we were clearly seeing it. A small, flickering light, like a candle's, coming from inside. We had a string of thieving in the neighborhood at the time and everyone was on edge. So we called our parents believing it might well be the actual hideout of said thieves. Soon, after noticing that we weren't joking, one of the adults came back with tools and started cutting the locks. As soon as the lock got cut, the light stopped. The adults came in, looked around, found nothing. Beside a really strong smell of decomposition they attributed to how the dude died. 
They sent us on our way, thinking it was a visual trick caused by the red curtains put on said window. But the light didn't stop and came back multiple times. The brothers were called. The electricity Engli showed up first and, influenced by his craft, thought there might be an electrical dysfunction. Nothing. They combed the area looking for a tunnel. Nothing. The entrance to the roof was sealed from the outside, and the iron bars put on the windows were not bothered at all. With his research being unsuccessful and the outside entrance definitely confirmed as the sole entrance, he chalked it to the curtains like the other adults, took them off, and left with them. Then the second brother showed up, cried foul and thievery for the silk curtains, and in response, sealed the front door with concrete, making entrance impossible. Yet the light stayed, always starting at around 18 to cease at around 21. It stopped about a month later, when both brothers agreed they were acting like twats and made peace. Hello Friendo, you have been visited by the cozy puppers of Lazy Sundays, upvote now or you may never have a good relax ever again. Thanks for watching, if you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video, or don't, either way, have a great day you magnificent people.